Welcome to Lunch and Learn, presented by Coda Bears. Progress Database Backups. First, let's cover a few backup basics about backing up your software or your databases. Always back up your database at least daily. More often, if you determine that the cost of losing a full day is unacceptable. It's going to be driven primarily on your transactional volume, your risk tolerance to losing data or having to re-enter data, etc. Always review your log files to verify that your backup was successful. And always test your backup and your recovery systems at least once a year, if not more frequently. Uh, one needs to be certain that the backup process and that the restore process all work as planned in a timely fashion so in the event that you're faced with an actual disaster you're able to recover as you expect never assume your backups are successful without testing them never ignore or postpone the backup process if you find you have an issue or you suspect address it immediately and you should and never store your backups in a non-fire safe container or with your only copy on site you should consider off-site or online storage so in the event that your entire server room or your building was uh, was destroyed by fire or other natural disaster you would be able to recover your data at a different location we're going to be looking at uh, today's topic in epicor 9 with the progress database epicor 8 and 9 were often run on progress. Epicor 10 only runs on SQL databases, so this particular Lunch and Learn is not relevant to Epicor 10. First thing to understand is the difference between offline and online backups. Basically, an online backup is conducted while your database and systems are running and they are accessible to users, whereas an offline backup, the database needs to be shut down and offline. Uh, this means that users cannot be in the system or conducting transactions. Typically, the offline are only done evenings or weekends or, you know, when you're making upgrades and such. Your automated systems will almost always be online backups. Today's first example we're going to do is, is going to be an offline backup. Uh, so first we need to shut down our app servers and our database. To do that, and we're using a tool called the Progress Explorer tool. Uh, you see here that you may or may not be familiar with, we have connected to our local machine here. The Progress Explorer tool runs on your Epicor server or on a administration box. If your server is 64-bit, the tool will not run natively on there without a, a hack being done to make it run. It only runs natively on a 32-bit machine. So typically we, we have the PET and other administration tools on a separate box if your server is 64-bit. Uh, since we're going to be doing offline, we need to shut down our app servers and database for the live environment. You always shut down your process server first, then your task agent, and then your primary app server and once they're all not running I then we can shut down our database sometimes it takes a little longer to shut down the primary app server there we go it's down and now we will go to our database we see our live database here we're going to shut that down as well we're going to need to know where that database is located at on the physical machine to be able to work with it so we're going to look at properties here with a right click and we're going to see here's where it is located uh, the Epicor share, the Epicor instance, and I905, and then in the DB folder. The tool we're going to use to do the backup is called the Pro ENV tool. That is a, an open edge tool. So when you look in your open edge folder on your all programs, you will see the Pro ENV right here. And it looks like a regular command prompt window. Once we're within the Pro ENV, we are going to type prompt. P-R-O-M-P-T. That brings us to the you know the interface where we can do work. And then we need to change directories so we're sitting in the directory that we want to back up that database. So here it's going to be C Epicor, Epicor 905, DB, and we're there. 
we'll take a look at what we see. And we see the typical database files, your B1, your D1, your database, your uh, egg license. And we notice that there is no LK file, no lock. Uh, if it was running, there would be a lock file there, and we would not be able to do an offline uh, backup. So from here, to do the backup, uh, we are sitting, you'll see, in the directory of that uh, of that database. The command is pro bkup, then the name of your database, MFG sys, and then the location and the uh, file name that you want the backup to be called. If you're putting the backup in the same directory, as you as you are running from here, you can just put in the name, and we're going to do that right now. So and we're going to call it backup dot test. So we know this is one from today. Enter, and it will begin running. This can take anywhere from you know a, a few seconds up to you know, however long. I've seen them run half an hour or longer with extremely large databases. It's also dependent on the on the resources that are available. Uh, on the server and some of performance that you see here will drive your decisions on if you can afford to make more than one backup during the day and, and if you can run them while people are using the system typically the backups are run if you're just doing one you know two or three in the morning and when your transactional volume is zero or very low if you want to run multiple backups at different times during the day and schedule those, you may want to run them during scheduled lunch hours or uh, after a shift change, not during a shift change when you see a lot of transactional activity with people clocking in and out, certainly. But again, uh, the users may have a noticeable system slowdown depending on your hardware and the size of your database during a online backup. All right, we are done through the magic of video editing we were able to make that seem like a short run it actually took about five minutes to run this one and it's a about a seven gig database six and a half gig so it will vary depending on your server and on the uh, the horsepower that you have behind it so you can see now in this directory we have a file called backup.test just under seven gigs here and that's ready to be restored or to archived. Typically, you might want to run your backups and when you're doing automatic with a script to the same directory or at least a directory on the same disk platter that your database is and then back up that file to tape or to the cloud or to network attached storage disk that you can uh, move away from site, etc. Because they will run uh, a faster when you're not pushing the backup across the network typically. All right, once we have that here, I'm going to show you how to do a, a restore of that same backup to the live database. Uh, and this is straightforward. It's the same process in reverse, of course. You need to use the PET with the database being shut down and your app servers. And from the PET here, we're going to use pro rest for pro restore. And then the database name, and then the location of the file and the file name that you want to, to restore to that database. In this particular case, we're just going to restore back from the one we just created, which is on the same directory, backup.test. So ProRest, the database name, which is typically MFG Syst, and then the name of the backup, the location and name of the backup file. And we're going to kick that off by pressing Enter. It's always going to say, if you're doing a, an overwrite or restoring, you know, a, uh, to an existing DB. Do you want to overwrite? The answer, of course, is yes. And then you let it rip. Okay, we're back. And it has restored. Uh, again, by the magic of video editing, it was, uh, this one took about, uh, you see there, 2 minutes and 49 seconds, if you see on the screen, that it shows us that. All right, now we've restored back to that database, to our live database. And at that point, 
we are going to bring it back up to make sure it works. Uh, we first start our database from the Progress Explorer tool. It should come up pretty snappily, and when it does, that's indicative that things went okay. If it takes a long time or it's pokey, something could be wrong. Then we want to start our app servers. Typically, if you're restoring to, I say, live to pilot or live to test, you're going to want to uh, edit the system agent at that point. Uh, because the database will bring across the ports for your app servers as well as the uh, the locations of the of the client file directory and the client program directory. Certainly, the ports are different. I will show you that right now. So, typically, if you're restoring to a different environment, and you want to just start your main app server, not your process server and task agent. Once that comes up. You can log into the software and view your system agent and make the changes on the process and task agent ports without causing any problems. So it says started. We're going to right click and check the status to be sure. It should say active right here, which it does. So now we're going to fire up our live Epicor 9. It should come up even though we haven't started our task agent and process server. And then from the application we need to edit the system agent which is under a your admin folder down at the bottom of the tree and utilities system agent i believe we'll be there in a moment there we go under your system management folder utilities and system agent now these are the two ports that typically need to be edited it, the ports for live are in version 9 are you know typically 9 xx3 and 9 xx1 this is the live db and we see a 9403 for the task server and a 401 for the system app server if we were restoring this to say train we'd have to edit this to be 9413 and 9411 if it was test it would be 94 Two three nine four, uh, oops, a nine four two one. So the convention is for live it's zero one zero three for uh, train it's one one and one three for test it's two one and two three and for uh, pilots three one and three three. The other things that may need to be edited depending on where your database came from is your client file directory, your client program directory, and your server file directory if you are porting a database in from a different server you're going to need to edit the server name here or if you have a non-standard setup of your of your directories you're going to need to edit these here the a server file client file and client program directory once you've done that we save that out and we close the application and then we can start up and run the other two app servers and then the application is ready to go pretty straightforward what happens when the backups are going to be automated which is what you need to do for your daily backups is we're going to have a script typically that will be kicked off by a Windows scheduler and when you look at your task scheduler here within a Windows server you're going to create a task schedule in here that is going to run the uh, that is going to run a, your backup script from there and you're going to typically run that as I said in the off hours uh, such that it does not interfere with users who are currently using the system or the system is, uh, you know, being transacted minimally. This, if there are scripts written that we have here at CodeBears and can supply for you. Uh, they're easy to find online as well. Basically, they are just, and you can also utilize the script that's within, that comes within progress. It's typically in the folder for Open Edge uh, on the Epicor share inside the bin folder. And it's typically called backup within there. To determine the schedule 
of your backups that you're going to be running here from the task scheduler. You need to know, is it going to be daily or more often? What days you want to run? What time you want to run? You need to consider the performance. If users are going to be online or, you know, a late at night, if you're only doing a single backup or to early morning hours. And then once you schedule that batch file to run in the task scheduler, then verify and verify and test. And make sure that the file that it's creating is usable and uh, does restore properly. And you can do that with the manual process that I just demonstrated. During a regular hours, you just grab it and put it into your pilot or into your test environment and see... Uh, how long it takes and and you can be sure that it is viable and works when you run this backup i recommend that it runs initially on the same server or it if there's no space it can run to a different server on the same local area network or to a network attached storage device but the key is you don't want to uh, run it to anything slower or tape or anything off-site once that backup file is created from your script that file can then be backed up with your standard backup software to an off-site solution or to a removable media or to the cloud advantages of using a cloud service are that you don't need to carry your disks off-site which has accompanied risk of loss breakage theft Sometimes you may forget to take them with you. And the online services like Carbonite are very handy because it's all done automatically and over the internet. They retain those files in an encrypted format in their data center. Now the downside to those type of things is that it's much slower to have to uh, you know, bring that the entire file back and restore. So keeping a copy close and on your local area network makes sense and an additional copy on removable media or in the cloud example of the cost recently for a service like carbonite 500 gigabytes was less than a thousand dollars a year so that's reasonable you know for safekeeping of your data so to sum up some of what we covered today make sure that you do a mock disaster recovery drill at least once a year Take your backup from all your forms of archiving and verify that you can restore them to a test environment. If the criteria there being the proper restoration, the timeliness of the process, uh, and that everything works as you expected. If you don't meet your expectations, <clears throat> then you got to alter your backup plan and rerun the testing once you've uh, tried the new process. Remember, when it comes to backups and disaster recovery, as they say, no one plans to fail. They just fail to plan. So uh, plan ahead and happy computing.